the Lord. Well, we'll take a few moments and we'll still our hearts before the Lord in prayer, please. Our loving and our eternal Heavenly Father, it is with thanksgiving and joy that we enter into thy most holy and sacred and loving presence. We realize, Lord, as Elijah of old, he lived in the presence of the Lord. He could say publicly, the God before whom I stand. And we desire, Lord, to be God conscious 24-7, if possible, we pray, Lord, even through the night watches that we might be conscious of the nearness of our God. We want to live under the shadow and the shelter of thy wing. We want, Lord, to live close to the throne. We realize, O oh God, that there is such a thing as a closer walk with God. There's such a thing as nearer, still nearer. And, Lord, even those of old who penned those great hymns, not just nearer, but still nearer. There's always a closer walk. There's always a higher plane. We realize, O oh God, that there's a fullness with thee that we could never exhaust. And we pray, Lord, you will draw me nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious wounded side. We desire, Lord, to walk with thee. It was said of Enoch that, uh, Lord, he was taken, he was translated, he was not because his life pleased the Lord. And we ask, O oh God, we would have a life that is honouring to Christ. In these days when he is rejected by the multitude, when society and nations have turned their backs upon him, we pray, O oh God, that we might stand forth for the Lord Jesus Christ as our Saviour King, that we might, Lord, own him before a godless Lord Christ, denying, rejecting world. We pray, Lord, we might bear his reproach, that we might, Lord, not shy away 
uh, from any trial or any, Lord, difficulty that we will face or any discomfort for being associated with the Son of God. We pray just as a nation in recent days have pledged their allegiance to a new monarch. We thank thee that our monarch never dies. He never changes. And while, Lord, the focus has been on a dead monarch, our monarch, our king is alive. We focus upon the king of kings and Lord of lords. We praise thee, our father, just like Isaiah. He could say in the year that you Uzziah, the king, died. Uh, Lord, his, his eyes were heavenward. I saw the Lord. And we pray, Lord, even in a day when our nation is focused, Lord, on a human being, that we might look to heaven and see there our reigning monarch, our king and our sovereign, that we might pledge allegiance afresh to the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And while we have that loyalty to king and country, we pray that Christ will be uh, Lord, preeminent in all that we seek to do. We long, Lord, that as thy people we might be drawn closer to thee. And Lord, the closer we get to thee, the more we see the loathsomeness of sin, the more we see those spots appearing, uh, those sins that we never knew were there. In the light of thy presence, Lord, they become ugly and heinous. And we cry to thee immediately as we approach thee for the cleansing power of the precious blood of Christ. We pray, Lord, you'll wash our hearts and you'll still our souls before thee. For thou art God worthy of all honour and praise. And we bless thee for the one at thy right hand who came into this world. We think of how, Lord, wicked and Lord, sinfulness was sin. We think of, Lord, of how sin looked upon in the world today is trivial, but in the eyes of God, it's a, a massive thing. Lord, it took God to come to deal with sin. There's nothing in the entire universe could have ever dealt with our sin, but God manifest in human flesh. Lord, dealt with the sin problem and the sin question. Lord, how vast and big is sin. Lord, we realize, O oh God, that deity had to be veiled in humanity in order that sin might be broken and its power destroyed and our sins would be purged and washed away and we lift our hearts in thanksgiving we love thee because thou hast first loved us and we rejoice you are with us you promised I will never leave thee nor forsake thee there are times we don't sense that presence Lord forgive us and grant that we will realise that you're nearer than we ever think possible because Lord we know that you've promised I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Be with us here tonight in the prayer house. We thank thee for the gathering of the church for prayer. We thank thee, Lord, for thy presence and blessing in past days and months. And we lift our hearts to thee for the volume of prayer that, Lord, continually ascends, not only on a Tuesday night, but at other seasons, at home, and, Lord, in other places. And we lift our hearts to thee and that there's that golden chain of intercession. The work is continually brought before thee. And, Lord, we thank thee that everything to do with the house and with the work of God and further afield is spread before the Lord and we're glad Lord that we can talk to thee about it and we just again bring this meeting in its entirety and others like it across our land into thy very hand and just place it there and ask for thy presence and sweet blessing remember thy servants who have come to minister to us we thank thee for Nigel and for Caroline we thank thee Lord for their life and testimony we rejoice O God in their ministry over many many years we Thank thee, Lord, for using them, encouraging them, blessing them for their willingness to serve and to do whatever their hand finds to do. Lord, they do it heartily as unto the Lord. And we thank thee for the years of their service. We bless thee, Lord, for fruit for their labor. And we thank thee for fellowship and friendship down through many years. And as they come tonight, Lord, encourage their hearts, we pray, as they share with us something of what the Lord is doing in Uganda and what, Lord, you've touched their hearts with, that you'll bless them and bless us tonight. And we pray, Lord, that above all, we We'll see Christ and the Great Commission uh, exalted and fulfilled in our midst. And Lord, we will be greatly burdened for prayer for the land of Uganda. That we will be interested, Lord, and revived in our own hearts and prayer life, Lord, to pray for the fulfillment of the Great Commission. Lord, we pray that we might get our eyes off the things of this earth and this world and this temporal realm. And Lord, focus on the spiritual and the eternal realm and to those things that count before God and eternity. And grant, Lord, we'll see the souls of men, not as trees walking, not as something that's obscure or brings discomfort to our lives, but as souls for whom Christ suffered and bled and died and rose again. Give us a heart for others. Give us a love for the souls of individuals. May we rediscover, if never,
necessary, the value of the soul. Lord, give us that threefold vision. Lord, the value of the soul of individuals, how precious that soul is. And give us, a, Lord, a vision of hell, a soul perishing for all eternity in the place where God has forgotten to be gracious. And then, Lord, bring us to Calvary that we may see there the vision of God's power to save for the preaching of the cross to them that, Lord, are unbelieving and are unsaved is foolishness, but to those of us who are saved, it's the power of God unto salvation. So bless us now and do our souls good as we still our hearts before thee as we come to sit at thy feet to hear thy word. Lord, speak to us tonight, we pray, and whatever condition we have found ourselves in, Lord, whether it's, Lord, with a burdened heart, Lord, even with a calm soul, we just pray that you will just draw near and give us that touch afresh and just revive us, Lord, and infill us with thy spirit we offer this our prayer giving thanks in the saviour's precious name amen and amen well we are delighted to welcome to our tuesday night prayer meeting uh dr nigel campbell and his wife caroline Uh, both come from the lisburn direction they've been in the lisburn free church for many many years and dr campbell our brother nigel is a, a ruling elder among many in our Lisburn congregation. Very personal friend of June and I over many, many years. And uh, we work together in the youth and the junior youth as well with my wife and Caroline. And uh, we value their friendship over many, many years. So he's here tonight under pressure for he got, forgot his laptop and all the pictures that he had stored and all that he had wanted to show to you tonight. Uh, but we're thankful to Paul and to Kyle at the back who have helped at least get some visual aid onto the screen. So Nigel and Caroline, we hand the meeting over to yourselves, then we'll give the rest to prayer. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you indeed for those very kind words of welcome. It's lovely to be here. Uh, I do feel under pressure, I have to confess. Uh, But the Lord knows, and he will undertake for us. The hymn that we sang at the start, I just took note of the last verse that we sang, and I thought that it applied to me. Since all that I meet shall work for my good. (laughs) It doesn't feel like that at the moment. The bitter is sweet, the medicine food, though painful at present. (laughs) This will cease before long, (laughs) and then, oh, how pleasant the conqueror's song. But it is a a joy to be with you here tonight. I don't know if you picked that deliberately or or, or not, but thank you for inviting us. Uh, We've been, I've been three times now to Uganda. My wife has been twice, and we want to just share with you something of what the Lord did for us when we were there on our last visit. Before we do any of that, can I read a, a passage from God's Word together that we'll maybe mention a little later on? And that'll calm my nerves up at the front here (laughs) and get my thoughts collected or recollected. Uh, And that's from Psalm number 24. Psalm number 24. Psalm number 24 is part of three psalms that go together in the scriptures. Psalm 22 is the psalm of the cross. Then Psalm number 23 is the psalm of the crook. And Psalm number 24 is the Psalm of the Crown. And we're going to read about the King, the King of Kings in this Psalm. Psalm number 24. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof the world, and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of God, the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul into vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Selah. And amen. And may the Lord bless this reading of his word. And we'll return to that a little later. I think what we'll do, and we're thinking on our feet. So my wife has a display of things that we have from 
Uh, Uganda here with us tonight, and you can have a little look at those. Uh, I, I should say hello to Andy here. It's so great to see you, Andy. And you could you could fill in all the gaps that we're going to miss out here tonight. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about what we went out to do, and then my wife will tell you a little bit about what she went out to do, and then we'll maybe show some pictures from our phone if we can manage that. So, as I say, this is the third time that I've been out to Uganda, 15th of July for three weeks or just over, and it was really for pulpit supply, uh, and I've been there two or three times before. Uh, you had uh, Noreen McAfee, I believe, with you not so long ago. She was with us just last night in Lisburn, which makes my embarrassment even more acute because her presentation was fantastic, I have to say, uh, unlike ours. But nonetheless, uh, I went out, and you will have known, perhaps, that there is a man who feels the call of God to go and, and be part of that work there in Uganda, and that's the Reverend Ray Kerskadden, who has accepted the call of God to his life and will be doing deputation work over the next number of months and hoping to go out and join the team there. But in the meantime, it's down to one, as Noreen put it last night, herself, and she returns back to Uganda in two weeks' time. So we were there for part of the time that she was there, and then she came home in furlough. So we were there maybe for a week or so with her, and then for uh, a couple of weeks after that just by ourselves. And I say ourselves, there were three of us actually, uh, myself, my wife, and Elizabeth Edwards, who is one of uh, the college students, the Whitfield College, just entered into second year missionary <laughs> studies, and she came out with us to Uganda. It was her first time uh, to Africa, I believe. I think I'm right in saying that. And uh, it was a joy to spend time with her, to get to know her. She's a great asset to the work. Uh, they already have her there permanently. Uh, I think they're just waiting on the Lord fulfilling the call in her life. But they would keep her very gladly. I'm wrong in saying that it was the first time to Africa. She'd been in Liberia last year, or maybe the year before. For, for as many as that, right, so some years ago. We arrived on a Saturday. Sunday's a very busy day for me. There's a, a prayer meeting first thing, then the service at 11 o'clock. Afternoon is... Uh, Sunday school, which Elizabeth took over the three weeks that we were there, and then there's a fellowship hour in the evening. I'm going to return at the end to talk a little bit about a, a new work that was new to me this time, which is prison ministry, and also some open air work. And, and those were things that I'll mention a little later on. Uh, I'll maybe look for some photographs if you would like to come and explain a wee bit about what you did, Caroline, when you were there. Thank you. You'll forgive them just being random. <laughs> well, it's lovely to be here with you this evening, and we do apologise for forgetting the laptop. If it was me, it would be a normal event, but uh, for, for Nigel to forget, it's, it's quite unusual, but providential, I'm sure. <laughs> so um, it is lovely to be here and to see Mr. and Mrs. Martin again, too. It's very special. So as Nigel said, Elizabeth went with us, and Elizabeth is from our congregation. We remember when she was born, she grew up in our congregation. So it was lovely to have somebody young with us and uh, lovely to have one of our Whitfield students with us and to see how their training is put into practice. And uh, she's a very gifted girl and she really fitted in amazingly well. Uh, she just threw herself into everything that was going on, whether it was going to watch the children playing sports or she's very academically gifted, so she was very interested in the school side of the ministry. And it is a ministry, even the school day, and also the church services and the Sunday school and the children's meetings the, or the assemblies in school. So um, our invitation to go this year came quite quickly. We didn't have an awful lot of time to prepare, so uh, it was a little bit terrifying because we kind of knew what we'd be doing. We'd been before, and there are school assemblies every day. We're very, very thankful to the Mission Board for the opportunity to go. We know it costs a lot of money to send an individual to Uganda, so when you're there, you really want to do as much as you possibly can to relieve Noreen's burden because she has to do these things all of the time and to help out in whatever way you can. Thankfully, when you get there, life is at a lot slower pace than here, which is lovely. Mm -hmm. And there is time in the morning after school assembly, which begins at half past seven in the morning. 
uh, there's time, sort of in that early morning period, plenty of time to prepare for afternoon assembly, which would be at half past four. So that sort of settled me a bit because I really needed to prepare every day. There were three weeks of school assembly and 450 children, and I was like, ooh. And I thought, Lord, there's people who are a lot more capable than I am who could do this, but the Lord said to my heart, I choose the foolish people to do my work, and I choose the weak, and you're the one that was called to do this, so you just have to be available, and I will help you. And he did. He really answered our prayers. So I suppose the Queen's... Platinum Jubilee had been running around my head because I work as a classroom assistant in school and of course there had been lots of celebrations in June and coming up to June for all of that and I thought hmm, I wonder should I do something about that because Uganda is part of the British Commonwealth so but I didn't want to do it just because it was a current popular thing in our culture and I prayed about it and during one of our um, communion services, uh, Mr Higginson uh, had talked about at length, his sermon had been about uh, Christ the King and it just kept coming up in, in everything we were reading and in meetings we were in. So I thought yes we will go with uh, a theme about Christ the King and providentially and unknown to me Elizabeth had been thinking about doing the kings of the Old Testament. But of course we know that whether it's Old or New Testament, all of the scriptures are pointing to Christ the King. So it actually dovetailed remarkably well for a pair of women who, who hadn't sat down and prepared for six months in advance. And the Lord is good. So um, Elizabeth, is the school assemblies are at half past four and they're, they're run concurrently, junior and senior. So for the first two weeks, Elizabeth did the Old Testament kings with the seniors, and I did my focus on kings with the juniors, and in the last week, we swapped over. So I did a little study on Elijah, which is largely about King Ahab, a very, very wicked king, and we learned a lot about that. And then we introduced, as our introduction to Christ the King, we talked about our country and the Platinum Jubilee celebrations, and did that over about two days. And the second, we did about what it means to be a king. And of course, our catechism teaches us that Christ has the office of a king. He executes or carries out the office of a king in subduing his and our enemies, uh, subduing us to himself, in ruling and defending us, and subduing, restraining and conquering all his and our enemies. So we put that into simple words and simple terms. And then on the second day, we focused on the crown. And the Bible has so much to say about the crown. And we had a picture of the queen's crown. And we were able to tell the children how many diamonds, how many rubies, how many sapphires, and all of those precious jewels and pearls were in the coronation crown, not to mention all the other jewels that she has. And then we said, would you like to see a picture of the crown that the Lord Jesus wore when he was on earth? And of course, we know that was a crown of humiliation. And it really, really touched our hearts as we thought about it ourselves. And the children really did enjoy those messages. And then three months later, here we are, and our queen, after all the celebrations, she passed away. And wasn't yesterday just a momentous day and the passages of scripture and the hymns that were sung were powerful I felt considering that she herself had chosen them so we had a wonderful time of blessing we talked about Nathaniel who came to Christ and recognized that he confessed Christ as king of Israel so we had a wonderful time and then we also had a couple of lessons that we taught the children their school t-shirt says the Lord giveth wisdom, or God gives wisdom, I think are the actual words on their t-shirt. So we had a wee study on Proverbs 4, and on another day, Proverbs 8, which are really, really favourite chapters of mine, and really tell us that it's Christ who's wisdom. And what a difference there is in academic ability and cleverness 
and wisdom and understanding, two entirely different things. And uh, so the Lord really, really blessed us. And I do feel very uncomfortable. Occasionally there'll be people, maybe unsaved people, when they hear you've been to Africa, oh, so good, it's wonderful, it's a wonderful work you're doing. You know, it's just wherever the Lord gives you an opportunity to go. And whether that's as a mummy at home with your children, that's a wonderful mission field to have. Or whether it's your Sunday school class, it doesn't matter if it's Northern Ireland, if it's Lisburn, if it's Cumber, or if it's Uganda. The thing I think that the Lord impressed in my heart, the first time we went to Uganda in 2020, or the first time I went, was that it gave me a real burden for the children at home because they think they have so much more than the African children, but actually they are as needy spiritually. Mm -hmm. And their hearts are more hardened. They're, they know far too much about the things they shouldn't know and really very little about the things that are important. And today we had on the news, <coughs> pardon me, the news that school classes uh, for religious education, RE, they're trying to whittle away the Christian element and make it more about world religion. And uh, apparently there are laws that mean that, that state we have to have a daily act of worship in school and as a classroom assistant myself I can tell you well there, there aren't daily acts of worship because there isn't time we maybe have it twice a week but they would often be without any reference to scripture or prayer um, so we really need to pray about that that maybe whenever the powers that be take a look at what the law says and what's required and what's supposed to be done people might say well what have we been doing and why have we not been doing and so on. And Uganda has a very open door at the minute. It wasn't always like that under Idi Amin. When I was growing up as a child, I remember hearing about Idi Amin, and he was a very, very cruel ruler, and it was a very violent time in Uganda. Now there's an open door. China seems to have an interest, isn't that right, Andy? China is building amazing roads in Uganda, but you wonder what the price to pay will be. So while we have time, it's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to speak to boys and girls and uh, adults too. Since the last, since our first visit, my first visit, your second, um, there's now the open air. We were very nervous, weren't we, Nigel, about open air ministry. That's actually not something we've ever <laughs> engaged in before. And it seems, you know, you're going to be speaking out into the open air to a people who aren't culturally the same, don't have the same language, and you're really getting back to basics and not assuming that these people know anything. But the open airs were a terrific blessing. And um, we found there was a lot of support from the children in school. Now, part of that might be because you get a ride in the Jeep <laughs> out to the neighbouring village, and it's bump, bump, bump the whole way, and they think it's quite fun. Uh, and so it is. But there is enthusiasm. A lot of those children will do the Bible shots where they'll say memory verses and they're very keen to give out literature and it really would do your heart good. And there's a disabled girl in a wheelchair who goes faithfully and she's a great encouragement in the church and turns up to all the meetings. And there, there are families, there are teachers as well who go. So it was actually a great encouragement and Never thought I'd be giving my testimony in Uganda. Mm -hmm. And and yet, you know, those people really received it well. Uganda is such a strange place. And uh, the village we went to was very, it's very untidy and unswept. It's not like Ulster at all, which is all about tidiness and keeping everything clipped and pristine. Um, and the shops have very unusual names. So opposite, there was a shop called... Jesus loves you, beauty salon. <laughs> and that's, I mean, one of our hobbies would be to go to towns and just spot all the really funny uh, titles people have. They, they'll think, my shop is good, I love the Lord, so it'll be, uh, I love the Lord, shoe shop kind of thing. Isn't that right, Andy? That's the kind of, they just put these labels on their shops. So 
the Jesus Loves You beauty salon was actually owned by a lady and her husband who they said they were Christians and certainly they welcomed us warmly and thanked us for coming to the area and uh, they, I think we stopped one day at the pharmacy to get something and they recognised the vehicle and they were, you know, welcoming us. So that's great to go to an area where, where you're welcome. On one of those visits to that village, uh, Elizabeth said to me, did you see what happened during the prayer? And I said, no, Elizabeth, I had my eyes closed. Why, why had you yours open? <laughs> she said, a great big rat about that side ran past my foot. And I said, I'm so glad I had my eyes closed. Don't ever want to see that. <laughs> so, but our, our home was very, very comfortable, thanks to Andy. Andy has done an amazing job and upgrading the mm -hmm. apartments Really, truly amazing what Andy has done, uh, pretty much single-handedly. I know you've had help over from time to time, but um, I so much appreciate it, Andy, it really is. And it means that the missionaries can live in comfort. And uh, we just acclimatised ourselves before we went by turning our shower cooler and cooler and cooler and cooler before we went so that we could do the cold shower thing. But we have electricity and we have, there are shops where you can buy normal food and we were very, very comfortable. Except that between the ceiling and the roof, there seemed to be some little feet, sometimes big feet. Elizabeth called it the Gruffalo. <laughs> she said the Gruffalo visited uh, occasionally, but we never saw the Gruffalo or if there was one or more, we do not know. But there was some kind of animal. Bats or rats? Not mm. sure. Not sure. But um, the children themselves are wonderful. And their lives are, their childhood is short. And their lives are very different to ours in, in so many ways. Uh, we did have a lot of fun with them. And... Um, in the evenings, there was a lot of time to do things like craft and bracelet making. And, oh, I, I turned myself into Mary Berry one night and I, I did a cookery <laughs> demonstration in the apartment. And I did one the following day for the day pupils, the senior girls. And we taught them how to bake buns. And they really enjoyed that. And they always, we never initiated this. They always ended these sessions by singing choruses and psalms and all and they they just didn't want to go back to their rooms they really loved the fellowship and it was so good but there was one night when we were doing a craft activity the boys were a wee bit annoyed that it was all for girls it was all this bracelet making was for girls and what was for them so nigel decided to make them popcorn and i came back into the house for something and i could see about 25 pairs of flip-flops lying at our door and I went in and the house was swarming with little boys and girls all having popcorn and there was a wee band of them doing dishes and the next day they came back madam we would like to do dishes for you and I said well I don't really have any dishes I've done all my dishes oh but we like to do dishes so what it was all about was at home they don't have a sink or running water or fairy liquid, or a dish, or a draining board, or tea towels. And it was like playing wee house. And they just loved to come and fill the sink and wash the dishes. And I had no fairy liquid left after about two days, because the bubbles were <laughs> everywhere. But uh, they were just so lovely and so good at it. And then on the last day, the sa last Saturday we left on the Sunday, they came and said, we have come to do your dishes one last time. And I was like, please don't make me cry. Uh, we have come to make breakfast for you. So I said, well, um, what would we be having for breakfast? This sounds like really good fun. And they said, noodles. So I said, well, I'm not really sure that, that my husband likes noodles for breakfast. Do you think we could make porridge? So they made porridge and they ate the porridge with us. But I think what I missed was they had seen the packets of dried noodles in our cupboard and they actually wanted noodles. <laughs> I totally didn't get the hint, but they were very, very sweet, very, very sweet and lovely. And uh, we did notice that the teenagers are very good at bringing the nine and ten year olds into their games of volleyball and football. There's none of this, you know, you're too young, go away. They, they bring them in and they're, they're really 
lovely young men of 18, 19, whatever the eldest are, and young women. And we need to pray for them because once their education is over at the school, they may go on to do A-levels elsewhere as the school doesn't currently do those. Or they may go into nursing or dressmaking or some other calling. Um, and we need to pray for their future as they leave the safe environment of school and go out into the big wide world, you know, because they are, it's quite a, a country area they're in. They're not exposed to the things of the world. So we need to pray for them. Is there anything else that I've... I've shown a wee smatter, and I don't know how clear they yes, were, but you've kind of picked up some. Yes, I've shown a wee... Yes, I was showing a wee smattering of pictures, not in the order that we had planned, but I think we've, hopefully you've got a taste yeah. of what it's like. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. if I can maybe mention a few other things then to you. Is that all that you have? So, um, I'm just going to finish with the verses of Revelation 1, 5 and 6 where the Bible says, and thinking of our kingship uh, theme, and thinking of the events around our queen and her platinum jubilee and her departure from this scene of time, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Caroline. Uh, I'll just give you a little bit more about Uganda, and then we'll look at this psalm together, if we may. Hopefully you've seen enough photographs to whet your appetite. We were just saying, coming along the road tonight, when we were young and the missionaries were coming to church, we were so excited as young people to go and see the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> no. So sorry, <laughs> sorry you've been disappointed. Well, you've seen some. We did have some downtime, so the week's very busy. I did morning assembly every day, half past seven. First time I was there, it was a full half hour. Uh, this time it's down to a, a smaller session, maybe 10 minutes. And we covered uh, things like, uh, well, I, I, I took up a medical theme, I suppose, in my time there. I reckon that nobody else would, so I, I did. Uh, whenever I arrived, one of the girls who had met me five years ago came up to me and says, Lubbed up, lubbed up, lubbed up. And I thought, oh, I taught you about that the first time, which is the heart sounds. <laughs> uh, the first time I was there. So that kind of set a theme in my head, and we spoke about interesting facts about feet and eyes and hair and teeth and legs and all sorts of things, heart and lungs, and, and, and we just went through the body, if you like, and then we picked out relevant verses that fitted in with the theme and applied the gospel to the boys and girls. And I think they enjoyed that very much. That was our morning devotions for the prayer meetings and the Bible studies and the various Lord's Day services. Uh, I used a theme that I'd had in my Bible class last year, which was looking through the life of Moses. Uh, and, and we took various lessons from the life of Moses from the book of Exodus throughout our, our time there. Uh, we did have some downtime, uh, knowing how to be left back to the airport uh, halfway through our visit. So we spent a day in Jinja, which is uh, maybe four or five hours from where the school is. Uh, we travelled there, we stayed overnight, uh, and then took Noreen to the airport the next day. Uh, Jinja is famed for being the source of the Nile. So we went on a little boat trip out to where the Nile begins there in the middle of Africa on its flow out to the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, we spent time also in Ginger Town and did some shopping, or my wife did some shopping, as you'll see up at the front. A couple of medical things happened, I suppose, because I'm a doctor and, and uh, Noreen shields me from a lot of this sort of stuff, but... There were a few things that happened, and indeed there is a medical ministry at the church and at the school. Um, two gentlemen in particular that were helped by gifts from people. Uh, people had sent us gifts as we travelled out. Uh, one gentleman had a hernia, and he came and wanted to see the school principal. I want the principal. Uh, and he was very embarrassed when he realised that the principal was female <laughs> and he was male <laughs> and had a male problem. Uh, but we got him sorted out. He got sent to hospital. He had his hernia repaired. And uh, then, of course, in Uganda, if you can't work, and he couldn't after his hernia repair, 
you don't eat, for you have no money. So we were able to support him then for a number of weeks after his surgery. And uh, one of the pictures I have on here, but not up there, was a picture of him. And, and just his thankfulness was to be beheld. Uh, he was so thankful at uh, us being able to provide him with help, both medical help and then also the food to keep him and those that were near and dear to him going until he was back fit again to be able to go uh, back to work. Another gentleman came with a very large swelling on his neck uh, and again through uh, our social worker on the team, Mr Augustine, uh, we were able to help him get tests done and he's waiting, I think it was to be September, to see an ENT surgeon who needs to have this tumour removed. But over there he was able to get a CT scan and a biopsy and a meeting with an ENT surgeon within weeks. Now match that here, if you would, in Northern Ireland. And cost some money, yes, but very, very little when you consider what we have. So it is an honour to be able to serve these people in that way. So those were a couple of medical things that came our way. We gave out blankets. I think I did show a couple of pictures there of, of giving blankets that a good friend of ours gave to us. We had a lot the first time we went out. And we gave those to little children born in the past year. Um, one of the photographs up there was the uh, deputy principal of the school, Madam Catherine, who's had another little boy called Eldad, Eldad mm -hmm. since we were there last. Uh, so we were able to give blankets and clothing, not, not to her son now, because she's a teacher in the school, but to other children born in the community. And one of them's called Noreen, little Noreen, mm -hmm. after the principal. So we had a photograph, we did show it up there, of little Noreen that we met. And again, the people are so thankful for what's sent over and for the support that's given. The two things that I asked our people in Lisburn to pray about specifically before I went for I was anxious about this, I'll confess, uh, were the, the open airs, as my wife had said. I had no experience. And, and how do you go out to a people who you know to be mostly Roman Catholic or Muslim? What do you say? What do you not say? What's the expectation? Will they listen? Will they welcome you? All of these were thoughts in our minds and in our hearts. But the Lord really blessed that ministry and blessed it to my own soul. Uh, to see the kids from school going in the back of the trucks and, and jumping down and, and reaching up to get the microphone because they're too small to get it and pulling it down and, and doing a Bible shot, doing a Bible verse uh, to those that are gathered it really was a blessing. And, and in these little villages round about, even though you may not see too many people looking on, they're listening and you do get people afterwards who tell you uh, that they had heard. And that was a blessing to my own heart. And the other blessing that I wanted to share with Mr. Martin and mine particularly was the prison ministry. Now, again, I was very anxious about this. You go into prison. I'd never been in prison before. <laughs> uh, so I didn't know what that was like. Uh, how would you get in and what would they think of you? And what do you say to people? You know, how do you tell them about sin and, and reproach for sin? And, and uh, Anyway, I was anxious about all of that. So I carefully thought about my first sermon which was John 3 and 17. Christ Jesus came into the world not to condemn the world. And I spoke that we were all condemned as sinners, but he came rather to save those that were lost. And, and those were the messages that we sought to apply. And what an audience we had. They are so thankful to hear God's word. They are so receptive to God's word. They come down, out and they sit on the grass and they listen to every word. And many of them had Bibles. Well, maybe not many, because they're not that common, I suppose. And we were able to take some of Mr. Martin's testimonies with us. Forty in total we gathered up. I think it's the last bunch. And uh, we divided those, those over the two prisons that we visited in Bukalula and Lukaya. Uh, 26 to one and 14 to the other, as I remember. And, and they were like hotcakes. Uh, of course, receiving anything... In prison, I think the people are very glad to receive, but they were particularly glad to receive this because I told them that this man was my former minister and he had been saved while he was in prison. So they were interested in the book. I went back the next week and, and some of them even had the book backed in paper. And you could tell that they were reading it because the, 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 the soil and the grubbiness was sort of halfway through all of the pages and then the rest were quite clean. And what an interest was shown in that and in God's word. And this was a tremendous blessing to me personally. 
Uh, my wife was able to come with me too to a couple of those prisons uh, and just to, to feel the Lord's help in all of that. And, and it's been a ministry that has started just in this last year, perhaps, um, and it's really been blessed of God. We don't know what the people think who are there. Um, they received it very gladly. They listened very well. And on the week that we left, we had to leave early um, to get to the airport. Um, but two or three of the men from the school, uh, Master Israel, uh, Master Ronald, and, and Master John, or, or John from the, the compound, they went and after the service, seven of those prisoners asked to speak to them and asked that they would come to know the Lord Amen. as their saviour. Now, we don't know how genuine that faith is, though who am I to doubt? Yes. The Lord's sovereign, isn't he? It's his work. And uh, Maybe I should shame myself even thinking that I doubt, but, but they asked to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray that they will grow in grace, they have an interest, that the Lord will do that work in their heart and give them that new birth, a new life that we enjoy, and that he'll give them a, a hunger after the things of God. So what a blessing that was, uh, and what a ministry that now is for the church there in Uganda. My last Sabbath day, uh, I was really conscious of my need of prayer. It was a busy day. We'd had a very busy week. Noreen was back here in Northern Ireland. Uh, all of the problems on site came my way, being the senior Mzungu on site. Uh, so there was a lot of difficulties and a lot of things that we had to contend with. So on the last Sunday, I really felt my need, uh, and, uh, and I prayed earnestly that the Lord would help me, and I felt very much my inadequacy to be there. And, and the Lord really came in and blessed on that day. We felt the assurance of his presence. We were given liberty. Uh, now, as... as as a doctor and not as a minister, you hear ministers talk about getting liberty in the pulpit and you wonder, well, I'm not quite sure what all that means, but I know now because I felt it on that Sunday. The Lord gave me the words. It was easy to speak forth the truth and the people were listening and responding to it. And one young girl afterwards by the name of Charity came up and asked me that she might be saved. <laughs> and what an honour that is to be able to lead someone to the Lord Jesus Christ and we pray for her we pray for her young life that she'll be spoken to in these days and that along with many others at the school and what a blessed opportunity they have to hear the gospel they don't hear it at home uh, most of these children are from a Roman Catholic or a Muslim background uh, none of them Noreen told us last night very few books if any in any of these homes no Bibles in these homes so their food if they're to grow in grace, is through the school and through the church ministry. And I think we need to pray much that the Lord will use the efforts. Yes, there's humanitarian work involved here, and we bless the Lord for that. But our primary aim is to share forth the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We had a theme of the Lord, our King. Uh, it flowed from our first time there as well, and, and also then was used by Caroline and Elizabeth in their afternoon assemblies between half past three and half past four. And I want just for a moment or two before we pray just to return to that Psalm 24 that we read earlier. For here we're introduced to Christ the King. Uh, there's been much talk in recent days. We're into a new era, a new reign of King Charles III, this new Carolean uh, era. Uh, and yet how wonderful it is to be part of a greater kingdom, a kingdom that knows no end, a kingdom where our king is alive and reigns forevermore. And that's the sense that we get at the end of Psalm 24. Many believe that these final verses speak of Christ's return back up to glory after his ascension. He came, he left heaven as God. But he returns to heaven as the God-man, for he took upon himself our humanity. And as he returned up through heaven's gates that we were reading about here, he went as the God-man, the one who was strong and mighty in battle, the one who faced the consequences and the guilt and the punishment for our sins there at Calvary. And he did so willingly. He need not have died for us, for he, or for himself, for he knew no sin. He could not sin. 
Yet he took upon himself the sins, our sins, so that one day we could go to heaven to be with him. No wonder heaven cried out, Gates, lift up your gates. Lift up your heads, ye doors. Receive this King of glory as he enters back into heaven. With sanctified sort of imagination, I can imagine maybe some of the hosts in heaven were saying, well, who is this King? We've not had this man before enter into heaven. And the answer comes, he's the King of glory. He's the one who's strong and mighty in battle. He is the Lord. He is Jehovah God, now veiled in human flesh. My friend, it was wonderful yesterday to hear, I agree with my wife, I think the service yesterday was very uplifting, and and to think that our monarch past chose those hymns and uh, some of the songs that were sung, O taste and see that the Lord is good, and uh, there was so much scripture in that. She quoted, there was a singing from Psalm 42 that I often preach from, and, and, and yet it took on a different context to me as, as we heard it in the service yesterday. But this king who has gone up into glory, the good news of the gospel is that he's coming back to receive us unto himself. Uh, and what a wonderful thought that is. Uh, our own minister, Reverend Higginson, quoted from another monarch, female monarch, who some years ago said this, She was asked, this is Queen Victoria this time, she was asked, uh, do you believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is to return to this earth? And she had reigned a long time, as our Queen had also, and she said, I'm a firm believer, this is a quotation, in the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I have sometimes thought he has permitted me to reign so long that perhaps I will never lay down my crown until I lay it at his feet when he comes again. What a beautiful thought that is. And oh, we pray for our present monarch, for King Charles III, that he might have this faith also. Uh, If we doubted it for our Queen, I think we were reassured, were we not, yesterday when we heard much of that service But for King Charles III, we pray that he might have that hope, that he might have that desire, that he might be a believer in the great return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And like his predecessors, he might feel, I lay down my crown at his feet, for he's worthy of all our crowns and 10,000 more. Can we sing a hymn together before we pray? Number 71, we sang this in... Church um, on Sunday. Maybe we'll choose just some of the verses, actually, if I may. <clears throat> Number 71, Jesus, the sinner's friend, we hide ourselves in thee. God looks upon the sprinkled blood that is our only plea. That's our plea when we come to prayer tonight. Uh, We enter into this prayer time and pray to the Father in heaven through Christ and what he has done for us. But it's that last verse that I've been thinking about particularly. Jesus, we'll give thee then such praises as are meet and cast 10,000 golden crowns adoring at thy feet. We'll never have a crown of a kingdom in this life. Uh, But we have our crowns, crowns that the Lord Jesus Christ has given to us. And we gladly lay them down at his feet, for he is the King of kings and Lord of lords. We'll sing the first, uh, well, they're all good, aren't they? Uh, The first, the third, the fifth, and the sixth. Hope you remember that. One, three, five, and six, four verses, if you would. And will we stand to sing just to change your position before prayer? Thank you.
Well, can we just say a sincere word of thanks to Dr. Campbell and his wife Caroline for coming along this evening. In some ways, the Lord makes no mistakes, so I think that you get more tuned in whenever you're under that type of pressure, and you don't have what you intended to do, and you're more focused, and uh, all those memories, and I think the ones that really count uh, were there, and they were brought out tonight, so I think we got a different presentation in one sense, and uh, certainly was enlightening and inspiring, and no doubt the Lord has blessed uh, their labour of love, and we do thank them for coming. And I thought about, we take so much for granted. He talked about the children not knowing anything about running water, a sink, and furry liquid. Do we have them in our house, Jane? Do we? I, yeah, I think we do, yeah. Uh, but I, I definitely use them now and again. <laughs> and then, of course, I thought about the children saying, could we make breakfast? And if they just had a made a surprise breakfast, then the little patter of feet at night, you wouldn't have heard them. <laughs> That would you have had for breakfast. So I think when you think they're moving at night, they're probably rats as opposed to bats. And I, and I do hear they're, they're very large out there. So, and there's quite a number. So there's probably cats out there too, is there? So you have some cats on site. So that keeps the population down. There's only one or two run past your feet on a Sunday morning. So uh, we are blessed here, that's for sure. Really, really blessed. And uh, they did say that uh, the shops have everything. I was about to shout out Mars bars, uh, but do they have them, do they? Oh, very good. Expensive. Oh, they're expensive, are they? Well, I can understand that. Uh, yes, they're, they're commodity rather than, well, I suppose. But the Lord has blessed them. So we want to remember the work in Uganda, our sister Noreen, uh, especially uh, there on her own. And God willing, uh, Raker Skad and his wife and family will leave. Uh, to go to Uganda. They have deputation work to do, first of all, so it may not be away until next year before they can actually go. They have to raise a certain amount and going out onto the mission board. So 70% of at least maybe two or three years, maybe four years, uh, finance is needed, and they have to raise that, not through just deputation. Deputation doesn't actually raise uh, all the money they need. It's more the covenant and the sending of the little slip on their prayer card, and covenanting, God willing, you know, five pound a month, ten pound, and so on. So uh, the mission board uh, give 30% of salary, and they have to raise 70% themselves. So those deputations are important, and uh, we know that we're living in uh, difficult days financially, and yet God's people are very faithful in giving and supporting. So do pray, please. We have been praying. I'm not sure who said it, or it came from the mission board, or the Easter convention, or in a deputation, but I picked it up, and we have been praying uh, about five families going out to Africa. So that's the first family. That's the first answer to prayer. And they did ask for at least five families uh, willing to go out uh, to Africa in order to serve the Lord. We trust the Lord will bless and encourage. Remember Kenya as well, Reverend Malcolm Patterson and his wife Alison are there, and of course Pastor Ken Gore. And then we think of Nepal, and we think of Joy and Paul Thapa, and we trust the Lord will be with them. And again too, uh, Joanne and Dave DeCanio out in Liberia, which we did hear about. And we trust the Lord will even raise up from some of our young people to go into Bible college and then onto the mission field. And who knows, there may be somebody here, and there may be someone praying about it for all we know. And out of the blue, you've been thinking about it and about doing something, and maybe you could go out for a little season or you maybe think perhaps even full-time service. Who knows what the Lord has for any of us, and we trust the Lord will encourage us and bless us in these days. We could remember as well this incoming week. We're glad tonight to have our mustard seed meetings back on again and from last week to this. So the, the numbers have been very steady, and tonight there was a very good number of young people and boys and girls in, and I think they had to go at least three times with the buses, uh, Norman, is that right? At least. So it takes a bit of time to ferry them to and from their homes, and, uh, and it's appreciated. There seems to be a good uh, group of workers, some extra folks there I noticed as well in, and we want to thank you for your labour of love. Pray the Lord will bless richly uh, these boys and girls. Do remember our meetings this incoming week, and then, God willing, for on Thursday, or on Sunday evening, we do have our family service. We trust the Lord will encourage you to get your loved ones out to the gospel meeting and under the sound of the word that we might see them brought to know Christ as their own and personal saviour. Any immediate